I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you take somebody um, by the hand right now and just will you tell them, I love him. in Deuteronomy first. Let's go to Numbers 33. And we're going to go with verse number 50. 
How many go to Bible class in your church? All right. Good, then you're going to be all right turning pages. How many of y'all go to Sunday school? Amen. Okay, you're not going to have a problem. Amen. <laughs> Come on, Numbers, Numbers 33. You got it? Amen. Come on, sanctified folks. Amen. Amen. Okay, now if it be your custom to stand up the reading of the word, it's most definitely fine with me. I'm standing. Huh? Come on, 33 numbers, shall we stand and read? Verse number 50, shall we? And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out some of the inhabitants the inhabitants of the land from before who? You. And destroy some of their all of their pictures and destroy some of their all of their molten and despite and quick pluck down or it means quickly quickly pluck down all their what? High places. Shall we read? And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein. For I have given you the land to possess it. Say dispossess, dispossess. To, possess. to possess. Look at somebody tell them you have to dispossess them so you can possess it. Tell somebody you got to evict and put out so you can move in. Verse 54, shall we read? And ye shall drive, divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. Hold it. 55, shall we read? But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks or needles in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Somebody say, moreover, moreover. when God says that, you underline it because this is what he's going to do. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Either you get rid of these devils, or God's going to get rid of you. Come on. Here. Get rid of them devils or God's going to get rid of you. Huh? Come on, go to Deuteronomy 7:17. 7, Shall we read? You got 17, say man. Come on, when we get to Deuteronomy chapter 7, let's go to verse number 14. You got it? Shall we read the word? Thou shalt be blessed above some people. All people, there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee some sickness, all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon some of them that, upon all them that hate thee. Look at somebody and say, don't hate me to get you in trouble. Uh, uh, tell them if you hate me, you might get sick. You might catch something you can't get rid of. Is that in your Bible? Verse 16, and thou shalt consume all of the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for there will be a snare unto you. Verse 17, if thou shalt say in thine heart, these nations are more than I, 
How can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord your God did unto Pharaoh and unto all of Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord your God do unto all of the people of them thou art afraid. Did you see it? Okay, forgive me. Verse 20, say moreover. Moreover the Lord thy God will send what? The hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from you be distraught thou shalt not be affrighted or afraid of them for the lord your god is among you a mighty god and terrible and the lord your god will put out those nations before thee by little and little verse 23 but the Lord your God shall deliver them unto you and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into your hands and thou shalt destroy them, their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou hast destroyed every one of them. The graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or the gold that is even on them, nor take it unto thee, lest there be a snare therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into your house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest and hate it. Thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout glory. glory. Come on, go to Exodus chapter number four. Thank you. Well, go to 12. Maybe we can slow, slow it down because there's a lot God's got to tell you. He wants something good to break loose in your spirit. <laughs> chapter 12, verse one and two only. Mm? You got it? Come on, Bible scholar. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, This month, this month. shall be the first month. Shall be of a new year for you. Say this month shall be the first month. Shall be the beginning of a new year for you. Shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them this is your year of release. Shout Wonderful. Look at his face, look at her face and said, God said, this is your year of release. Shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, Happy New Year, baby. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Sisters and brothers, 
This is just not a message. This is the message from the Lord. Sister Zen, brother, you got to let her know. Listen, this ain't no game, brother. This is a brand new something, a brand new year, a brand new season. This, this is a brand new time for you. Look at him one more time and say, God said, this is your year. Tell him it started right now, right now, right now, right now. This is your year of relief. God, we thank you. Put it down in good ground. Give it good ground, good ground, good ground, good ground, good ground. Let your word go down in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. God bless you while you're taking your seat in your new time zone, in your new year, in your year release. Uh, somebody here has been praying and asking God, how long? going to try to let you know through the validation of God's word. The Bible said the word is line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept here, a little and there, a little. Sisters and brothers, I promise you, I promise you, this is just not a message. This is the word of the Lord. And it is a time word. It is a rhema. It is a time zone word for the church now. This is fresh out of heaven. This is prophetic. It is a clear word. It is a precise word. We are in the movement and the happening of this word now. Sisters and brothers, once again, tell a brother or sister next to you, this month, right here, right now, this is your beginning, honey, of a brand new year. Brand new, it's brand new, it's brand new. You ain't never been here in your life. This is brand new, brand new. Sisters and brothers, I want you to understand something that is very, very clear. On July the 20th, 1997, of last year, the Lord spoke to me. I was on my way to another meeting. He said, when you get back here, when you get back here, preach and make proclamation that I am declaring to my people that this is their year of release. Now, I have not known ever God to say a thing and it not come to pass. I've not known ever. Not ever, not ever, ma'am, sir, not ever has God ever spoken a thing and it did not come to pass because I was in darkness in what he was saying and it made it so profound. Sometimes the Lord speaks to me right straight out of his word or sometimes he impresses my spirit in prayer. Other times he shows me a vision. And at other times, which is rare, and in between, he will use an audible voice. In this manifestation, it was an audible voice. And he spake from here down and said, declare. He said, proclaim it everywhere you go. That this is their year of release. He said, preach it to the whole of the body of Christ. Now, I know I can't do that. I know I can't get there, but I know you can. And so we ask you to buy the tapes, preach it, teach it, send it to somebody, tell them what time it is so that they will not be under the spirit of oppression, not one more second longer. Come on, shout hallelujah, shout glory. Sisters and brothers, this declaration of the year release. Since we've been preaching it since July, we've been hearing the prophets all across the body of Christ 
They had picked it up that this is the jubilee. This is the year release. This is the time or the year of the church. And it is so. It is so, sisters and brothers. It is definitely so. This is the first time in many years that Israel has had a jubilee. They have not experienced a jubilee since 70 AD. The temple was torn down. Sisters and brothers, they have been a nation. 1948, they came to nationhood. And this is now 1998. This is the 50th year that Israel is declaring by law, this is the Jubilee. In the Jubilee, it is indicative that everything that was taken from them be restored to them. Sisters and brothers, I want you to hear God. Look at God stepping ahead of this brand new year. You see it? He tells me in July, tell the church what time it is so that when the clock ticked 1998, we would not be one step behind our elder brother Israel. We would be stepping Old and New Testament together in the year of Jubilee and the year of release. Sisters and brothers, both natural and spiritual, huh? Jehovah and Jesus, we would be stepping in unity together. God has done this thing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now we're going to try to share with you some of it, but the passages are extensive. The study is extensive and what God has shared with us is so extensive about how he's going to bless you, his people. So we'll try to take just pieces of it and share it with you on tonight. And if the Lord should tell us to say the rest of it tomorrow, we will. If not, we're just going to ask you if you will just get the series. It's been 20 some weeks now. God has been saying, look at this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and then tell them this. Do you know God can talk and keep talking? Yes. Now, don't get upset if he don't talk to you, but God is talking. Yes. There is a relationship that God has with his people. Yes. Sisters and brothers, this is a phenomenal year. I'm more excited than I have the ability to contain. I am so ecstatic and nervous about this year because it is not a 365 day year. This is not considering a calendar year or our civil year. This is not about any of that. This is about God's timing. And when God sets up a timing, we are not moving into a blessing. We are moving into dimension. There is a difference between a blessing from the Lord and a dimension. It is a time what they call the zona. It is a band or several bands of time that are wrapped together called dimension. It means it is an extensive period of time. We have been living in the day of the Lord since, 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 since a long time. Did you hear me? Since Calvary, we've been living in the day of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, this thing has opened and it closes whenever God gets ready. But I want you to understand this is in, it's not a 365 day calendar year. This time of presence and favor that has hit the body of Christ is going to go on and on and on and on. This is the reason why we share with you tonight to sit in his presence, sit, sit in his presence and soak this stuff in without being inhibited, huh? Without being uh, uh, fearful, you are in safe hands, honey. But God needs to transfer something in your spirit. He needs to put it in your spirit without you fighting it, judging it, weighing it. Is this really so? No, no, baby. Ain't no really so. It's a fact. This is a fact. So, and I asked the Lord, I said, well, what do you mean? I don't. I don't have the clear on this because I'm not that kind of bright person. I ask God, he has to slow down to me. Help me. Help me understand what you're saying. And he said, like I delivered the children out of Egypt, 
This is the same way I'm going to deliver my church. Then he said, go back and study the Exodus and you will know what I am about to do to my people, the church. But he said, let them know it has already begun. That's why I, I, I'm glad to be here today. Uh, thank God for sharing because uh, it, 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 you, you just have to move in God's timing. And July the 20th, it has already started. It's already started. You're in the process. You're not late. You're not late. You're not late at all because he says it begins now. So when we look at it, I need you to go with us in time to the time of the Exodus so that we can see a little bit more clearly what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us, his people, at this time. So when we go to Exodus, Exodus is a book that is called Wela Shemoth. It means now these are the names. So when you get to Exodus, it starts out just like that. It says, now these are the names. These are the names that went down into Egypt. It was some 70 souls. But sisters and brothers, when they came out, they came out of massive delivered army. Now, when they were there, of course, you understand the pain that went on there. Have you ever been invited someplace and then it looks like people turned on you after they invited you to come? Have you ever been someplace? You were invited. You didn't just bust in, you were, you were invited, you know, but once you got there, then everybody start acting funny with you and, and, and treating you like an alien or treating you like an intruder. Now you are there by invitation. I want you to understand Israel did not sin and then be brought down into Egypt. God was not beating them and then sending them down. This is not the case. Israel was an invited guest. Joseph invited them through the invitation of Ramesses the first to come down, come on down and, and enjoy the Lord here with us. And he gave them a plot of land. They had their own side of town so that they could be comfortable with their customs and could be comfortable in worshiping their God. They had their own prime land of real estate. It was called Goshen. And in that particular area, uh, when you look at Egypt, it is a metropolis. And it's a unique dynasty at this, this particular time. It was the chief economy and the chief ruling area of the world. It was from here that the world was being fed. It was from here that the world was being ministered unto. Joseph was sitting as the very third ruler in the land of Egypt. It was here that they understood the systematic walks and ways of God by utilizing Joseph and his connection and his intimacy and relationship with God. It was because of the visions that God gave this young dreamer that the whole world survived. Not just 70 souls, but that the whole world survived. What was operating there, it was the anointing, the anointing of the prophetic was operating, the anointing of this gift saved the world. It delivered a whole world from the destruction of famine and pestilence that had hit the global circumference. Sisters and brothers, every nationality was going down into Egypt to be delivered. Isn't it something when you know that you are in devastation, that there is a man or a woman who can get in touch with God and God can send them a word of deliverance. It is good to pray for your leadership because you need a definite God word, not just a word because you can get a word or down the street Joe can get a word, Sally Cross Town can get a word, but the thing that differentiates the word is who is inspiring that word. You want a God word, not just somebody uh, mixing up something because the power of prophecy is just not a prophetic gift that is located in the church only. Only it's true gift is in the church. But there are false prophets, like there are false pastors and false evangelists and false teachers and false apostles. 
Everything that God has that is a true anointed gift is also imitated in falsehood. Sisters and brothers, anointing is just not a word that is located in the church alone. Uh, Satan has anointed gifts. He anoints them with the wisdoms from hell, from the powers from hell. Uh, that's the reason why you have to have the discernment of God to discern what is a word of God and what is just a word from the pits of hell. Now, if Bible declares to us that in many instances, Satan transforms himself in as a messenger or an angel of light. That is all an angel is. It is a heavenly messenger one who is a messenger from heaven or one who is a messenger from hell angel angels you got angels of darkness and angels of light you got preaching of light and preaching of darkness you got singers from light and singers from hell sisters and brothers you have to know from what spirit the gift has been inspired mm. you've got to know who it is that is operating in that gift because if we operate just by our own intellect then still we are too far short because you can run God's house by your intellect but you won't get far mm. intellect burns out because intellect works against the power of the faith gift. Faith is something that you just have to know is fact when you hear God say, do a thing. And when it says, do it, oftentimes the necessary things are not in line. Mm. Uh, it takes you from the natural to the supernatural. You have to be willing to cross the bridge from natural to supernatural to believe God when it comes to faith. Sisters and brothers, faith is fact. It is substance. It is something that can be tangible. You can hold on to it. But the thing about faith is because of its invisible form and its factual continuity, oftentimes if someone does not have faith at the level that you have in God, oftentimes you are looked on as a heretic or a buffoon. Sisters and brothers, because in many natural instances, faith does not make sense. In societal guidelines, faith does not make sense. Faith doesn't make sense at the bank. It doesn't make sense to some people. It just does not make sense. But because God is the father of the faithful, then he says unto us as believers, the just or the upright shall live by his faith. Sisters and brothers, we have to realize some of the stuff and the places that God would have us go just doesn't make sense. Why will you invite me to go down somewhere so people can abuse me and misuse me? Ah, it don't make sense. Why would you stick me in a congregation of people where I was like, but now I'm hated? Why would you mix me up with a stew of relationships where once they embrace me, now they're trying to fear, figure out how they can get rid of me. They're trying to figure out how they can kill me, sisters and brothers. But God has a divine plan. Mm. These 70 souls who are down in this invited place. The laws have changed and that's the thing you have to remember about any country. They have the power to change the laws. Mm. You are not ex and completely autonomous wherever you are because it is who is ruling in power. They have the right to rescind the law. Mm. Oftentimes, there are other nations and countries, they use the word kudeto. This means to usurp or overthrow the existing government. Mm -hmm. 
It is according to sometimes military powers where they will overthrow or rescind or oust the present government. What we are looking at here is Pharaoh has died and also Joseph, the third in power, has died and these have been left without favor to the new king. Mm. Uh, there rose up a new government, a new set of orders, a new power or controlling power who refused to recognize the position that these people were invited to be a part of. Huh? You've been invited to the table, but now they didn't change the rules. Huh? Now they didn't change the rules. Sisters and brothers, you're safe and comfortable. You always ate dinner with them after church. You always went out together and shared wonderful Christian fellowship. But now the rules have changed. Huh? Well, these people, because the rules have changed, have now been handed a whole degeneration uh, uh, of servitude. Now they have been absolutely moved from just normal human relationship into subservial slavery. They have been cast down. They are now the urchins of, uh, of the city and the great empire of Egypt. They are looked on as indigents. They are looked on as the poor. They are the ragtag band of, of ill illicit, ill-sorted group. They are the ones who are blamed for all of the misfortunes and the ills that happen in the land. Have you noticed when rules and atmosphere changes about you that all of a sudden you become the bad seed? You, you become the dark horse. You, you become the cause and the source of problems. You, you're the dark one in the family. And this is the reason why we're having trouble because of you. Uh, you become unlucky if there's any such thing as that mess. But you become the unlucky. You become number 13. You know how the devil likes to paint a picture. So here they are. Now they are intimidated and afraid. They have been handed hammers and they have been brought out in, in groups and bands. They have been tied up humanly together. They have been whipped and sent out to the, the stone areas to uh, extract stones from the mountainside. They have been given the work to work in labor in the quarries. They are the ones who are breaking their backs, making